Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be reviewing the movie Skate Kitchen, which was published by Magnolia Pictures and directed by Christo Mosley back in 2018. And it's a movie about an introverted teen skater uh, named Camille, who befriends an all-girl NYC skate crew called Skate Kitchen, and she basically experiences a coming-of-age journey. Now before I begin, I'm not going to show any footage that's found in the movie, like shots or whatever, not even stuff from the trailers, and that's really because I don't want my channel to be copyright struck just by a company or whatever, so I'm not going to risk that. And in this video, I will be discussing major spoilers, which I will warn about before diving into that topic. So Skate Kitchen is actually a real life group, um, I believe they're at NYC, and all the girls in the crew play a fictionalized version of themselves in this movie. I don't know anything whatsoever about this about the real life group, so my review about this movie is only going to be about the skaters that are portrayed in this movie, the actual fictional characters, not the real life crew. And the whole plot and movie is actually based off one of the girls' experience, the main character, Rochelle Vinberg. Now I would say it's a very interesting concept in which you base off real life events with the actual people who were uh, part of this journey. But the movie really does fall flat at uh, many parts. It does start off strong, don't get me wrong, but then as the movie goes more and more and more, um, there are very obvious faults within the movie. And the biggest one being that it depends a lot on uh, filler content and the concept of uh, show not tell, in which this movie does the opposite. It does a lot of telling instead of showing. So what does this movie do good? Well, it does the world building of this movie very, very well to the point where it feels extremely natural. So if you ever played a video game, uh, like a, let's say a first person shooter, and then you die and you're spectating everyone else in the game, and you know, you can see their actions, but they don't know that they can see you because you're invisible, that's exactly what this movie feels like. It really feels like you're an invisible spectator in this real life world, which, you know, it you can say that about every movie, but in this one, it just feels super natural. I believe a lot of the shots were done on the streets of New York, rather than at some studio or whatnot. But if I am wrong about this, you know, that just shows how uh, well of a job they did at this certain world building. The character interactions for the most part feel very natural to each other, like how they um, talk or their relationship relationships to each other. None of it feels forced. Now a lot of the bonding between the um, people in the movie is shown as like little montages where they're skating or just messing around or whatnot. And usually I wouldn't say this would work, but honestly this does work, but you have to skate to understand it. It may not make sense to those that don't, but in skateboarding, bonds just, you know, it just kind of happens without any obvious progression. And you won't really know what I'm talking about unless you've experienced that yourself, to where it's like you just meet some guy, he has a board, you have a board, all of a sudden you guys are best friends. You know, it just happens. And then those montages just really drive that uh, concept home, and, and I find that it really works in the context of this movie. What also adds to the natural ability of this world is that there there's a lot of dramatic shots, but there aren't any stage shots, if that makes any sort of sense, where they tell a certain character to stand in a certain light so they can get a really nice dramatic angle. It really just feels like they went out into the real world and were like, okay, start acting, and then they just let the camera roll and just let whatever happen, just happen. Now in the darker shots, there is very obvious visual grain. So I believe the post-processing of the camera work and the shots or whatnot were very very minimal. It was most likely just color correction and that was about it. There was also one scene in the movie where it was super super dark and I couldn't even see anything. All I saw were just like very dim silhouettes. Now the acting isn't going to win any rewards. I think Camille's actor Rachel, uh, whose you know story this movie was based on, does portray the introverted skater pretty well. I really do feel like it's a very accurate representation of your general introverted skater who doesn't really they don't really talk to people. They just kind of view the world through the social media. But you know once they get to know people, they start to open up more and more and more. It's not a very immediately like opening. They're all of a sudden an extrovert, but it's a very very slow progression that for various reasons can just like end and out of nowhere and then that introverted person who was progressing to be extroverted automatically just regresses into their old introverted self and i find that this movie really portrays that very accurately now in addition to world building most of the characters feel very natural and it's not going to be a very clean slate they actually talk about a lot of vulgar stuff in here a lot of adult themes so a lot of that does include like 
such as like sex and sexual preference and a lot more other stuff and that's actually not outside the realm of reality a lot of like skaters just kind of do it it just comes with the territory because you know rebellious skaters and whatnot talking about stuff and because most of these people aren't actually professional actors i feel like it's a lot more natural because they're just I feel like they're playing their natural selves in a very effective way rather than trying to act like a certain persona that they're actually not. And again, it just works really well and goes back to the whole world building thing. So yeah, I think the strong, the very strong point of this movie is the pretty much the world building, how it makes everything just feel super, super natural. Now for the bad parts of the movie, there's, it doesn't really feel like that there was like a certain plot. Like, you know this is a coming of age movie, like as you follow Camille around through her various journeys or whatnot, but there wasn't a whole connected thing where it's like one solid plot where she goes from point A to point B. It just feels like that she kind of bounces around everywhere. But you know, maybe that's kind of the point of the movie, where introverted people don't really know their end goal. They just kind of go with the waves. And, and maybe that concept will work for some people, but for me, it just didn't hit home at all. Well, just because it has really strong world building doesn't mean it has very effective storytelling. A lot of the movie is tell not show, and it's a very basic concept in storytelling that you want to show your audience what's happening, not tell them what's happening. Because if you just tell them what's happening, they're actually not going to care about what you have to say or what you want to show on screen. But if you show them it, that will actually incentivize them to continue watching and to actually care about what's going on in the scene. So for example, the mid 90s directed by Jonah Hill, released in the same year, 2018, it opens with our protagonist Stevie just getting the life beaten out of him by his abusive older brother. Now, this scene wouldn't have so much impact if it was told rather than shown. Would you care at all about Stevie's abuse if it was shown as it was in the movie or if it was told through some sort of exposition where he just all like, oh yeah, you know, my brother beats me. So that that character establishment of Stevie and his relationship with like home and his brother is a lot more effective when it was shown and not told. And Skate Kitchen just really fails at this concept because it does a lot of tell and not show. Now from this point on, we're going to be talking about spoilers because I need to bring up specific examples of when this happens in the movie. So skip to this timestamp if you do not want to hear any spoilers. So at one point, Camille is talking to one of the characters, Janae, about uh, her family situation and why she lives with her mom. And she basically tell and she basically talks about like how she used to live with her dad, but then when she started visiting her mom more and more, she decided to live with her mom and she doesn't talk to her dad anymore. Now, this was supposed to be a very deep and understanding moment for the protagonist, but honestly, I just felt very disinterested because she just told about it and none of this was shown. And this movie definitely has enough runtime for that certain thing to be shown. And that was, and a lot of that is actually part of her internal conflict. Karen decided about where she belongs, and this whole family relationship actually does play a part in it. But again, since it's not shown to the audience, it's told instead, it doesn't have that same really uh, meaningful impact that this scene was supposed to have. Another thing I found weird was that conflicts just kind of come out of nowhere, and most of them don't really get resolved. So the first one will be between the, the mom and Camille. So the mom is showing that she actually cares about Camille and does her best despite it not lining up with what Cam wants. So it's weird that in some points the mom is portrayed as the devil and a lot of it just goes from 0 to 100 real quick. So for instance mom bans Camille from skateboarding but Camille decides to like sneak out and just keeps skating anyways. When mom finds out she takes away Camille's board but Camille gets a new one and keeps skating. Then uh, when Camille's skating her mom comes to the skate park to confront her and then Camille just all of a sudden just says like mom you're dead to me and whatnot. Mom hits her and then Camille runs away from home. From my summary it does sound like there is some sort of build up but these certain uh, events to where these um, conflicts are shown aren't really shown in much detail. They're very very short and it really doesn't feel like a slow gradual build up to this whole um, conflict to where that causes Camille to run away. It just kind of staggers along in really uh, short steps up to the point to where she runs away. And at that point, it really does feel unnatural, where it feels like they decide to cut off a lot of stuff for the sake of runtime. Now, I feel like this conflict in the moment too, where Camille has that uh, final conflict with her mom and runs away, would have had a lot more impact if there was a lot more storytelling much more involved in this, to where a gradual buildup is shown to the viewer. But as it stands, it just really felt like it almost came out of nowhere. And and the movie does this at certain points as well. Another being with the uh, Skate Kitchen's conflict with another group of boy skaters. This one 
came out of nowhere with there's zero explanation or exposition or whatnot uh, shown to as to why these two groups conflict with each other. It literally just comes out of nowhere in a montage to where they're like screaming and fighting at each other. And it's like, what's the point of it, you know? At this point, it really just feels like they threw in a whole boys are bad thing just for the sake of it. And if there was some sort of build up shown or some sort of explanation, it would have been a lot more interesting and meaningful as to why these two groups conflict with each other. But as it stands, it just feels like they hate each other for no reason whatsoever, aside from maybe some sort of gender thing. Now we're gonna f now fast forwarding all the way towards the end of the movie. One of the characters, Janae, and then one of the characters, Devin, which is basically a love interest for Camille, which we'll get more into later, is kind of explained, but it's only very basically minimally talked about, in which Janae and Devin had a thing, Janae wanted more, but Devin didn't, so they just broke it off. And as a result of it not being explored or really talked about, it just feels very generic. And it's kind of like, you know, who cares, you know? But people do care, and we'll get more into that later. While I believe the movie was realistic in the most part, there were some really weird moments in the movie that just kind of turned me off from it. Now the first one would being is when Janae just takes someone's deck so Camille will have it and this is at the point where Camille doesn't have a board but then for whatever reason the deck's owner is portrayed as some sort of antagonist but no it's a brand new deck it belongs to him it's not Janae it's not for Janae just to take in real life no matter the circumstance don't mess with someone's board no one in the right man would do what Janae did and think that they're in the right one of the characters as well Kurt she just feels very unnaturally aggressive and vulgar and it's pretty persistent throughout the movie, more so in the beginning though. It feels like that she just like swears and beats vulgars just because the movie really needed it. And none of the other girls in the group actually contrast or meet her uh, level of energy and personality. Which is another reason why it just doesn't feel right because there's nothing complimenting her personality. And at one point she just steals a mailman's handshake for no reason whatsoever. Like she just grabs it in the scene. And then in the next scene, it's not even being used. It's not even present in the scene. So it was a really weird shot and character building for her. And as for the other characters, honestly, most of them are very forgettable. None of them really just stand out. And if you had to tell me to like name characters, I can only name a few. Those being Kurt, Camille, and Devin. Um, Kurt because of her personality, Camille and Devin because they're one's the main character and one is the supporting character. Jenny's also a supporting character, but honestly, Devin as a supporting character is a lot more memorable than her character. Now another thing I have with this movie is that there was a very unnecessary scene. There was a party scene in the movie which goes on for a pretty long time, much longer than it needed to be and it really feels like it's overstate their welcome. The entire thing felt like a sort of filler and it didn't give much character progression aside from Camille trying cigarettes for the first time which doesn't get explored again. And then this scene is... I don't know, it just felt unnecessary. In there, there's like, you know, kids doing drugs and then there's what's basically an orgy in it. And it just feels like it was thrown in there just for the sake of it. And if you uh, remove this party scene from the movie as a whole, nothing about the movie would have changed. That just shows how unimportant that scene was and how that entire thing felt like a filler. Now to this point, um, Camille starts skating with the boys to turn out to be normal and she gets a new uh, supporting character or love interest as talked about before, Devin. And I've seen the people saying that like how Devin was a useless character and like she he, they didn't really need that relationship between each other, but I argue against that because he was the bridge between uh, Camille and skating with the boys group. And if you remove Devin from the movie, that whole character from the movie, Camille wouldn't have started skating with the boy group. And that's a big thing because when she starts skating with the boy group, they just turn out to be normal. Like previously, the boys are just like shown to be a really big conflict with the other uh, skate kitchen group. But when she's when Camille starts skating with them, they just yeah they're just normal. And I really like this because it reinforces that true and realistic idea that skaters generally unite no matter their gender or ideas. And I know I'm speaking in a very general sense, that's not true everywhere, and I'm not trying to downplay people's experiences, but in my experience, that has been true for me. So, you know, I'm gonna stick with that. Alright, so moving on, we already learned that uh, Janae and Devin had a thing before. And then, uh, Janae finds out that Cam is hanging out with Devin and she gets extremely pissed at Cameo and somehow this makes Cam a very bad person and it completely destroys her relationship with Skate Kitchen. She gets completely exiled and cut off from the group. 
Now this one was weird because it had zero buildup and it made zero sense. Because as far as we know, Devin's actually a good guy. You know, there was some exposition, exposition saying like, oh no, Devin's a bad person. None of that was explained. And the only person who had actually real conflict with um, Devin was Janae. And that's, even that conflict wasn't like very strong. And this was weird because it just makes Gate Kitchen come off as extremely immature and for the lack of a better term, very bitchy. And I'm not even sure why they included this, because it just makes Skate Kitchen just look bad. And the whole movie's called Skate Kitchen, you know? Based off the real life group. So this was a weird thing to actually put into the movie. But while I think this conflict was weird, it actually served a purpose. Because after Camille breaks off with um, Skate Kitchen, she regresses back into her old introverted self. Where she's just all alone, doesn't really talk to anyone, and just kind of, you know, views the skate road through her phone. Now the next scene is really weird and if you aren't sensitive about the topic that's on screen right now, I would advise skipping to this time scene so we so we just skip it entirely. Alright, so I have no idea why this was in the movie whatsoever. Because it just makes pretty much everyone but Devin look bad in it. And if you remove this mo and if you remove this scene from the movie, the movie will not change whatsoever. And I have zero idea why it was edited in there whatsoever. So at this point Camille's living in Devin's apartment. Uh, what she shares with a bunch of guys and she sleeps on the couch but then one night she decides to go into Devin's room get down to underwear wear his shirt and sleep is in his bed then Devin comes in uh, super drunk uh, he doesn't even know that she's there until like he notices her he tries to sleep but then she puts herself onto him which literally is textbook rape and they literally teach you about this the first thing in college what you are required to learn by title nine into which um, people who are intoxicated by like drugs or alcohol or whatnot cannot legally consent but then after getting into it some, Devin stops and tells her that he doesn't want to do this because he doesn't have that same mutual feeling as her and thankfully she accepts his uh, wishes and stops. And again, I have zero idea why this scene was included. It just makes Camille, it just pretty much turns Camille into a rapist and adds nothing to the story. And just reiterating, if this scene was removed altogether, nothing about the movie would have changed. And then after this scene, Camille returns home to her mom and she has a breakdown. And then it's implied they, they reunite and fix their broken relationship, but now it's shown that her mom actually approves of her skating, and then Camille actually like shows her mom how to like step on the board and ride it, which is really nice to see. And then for the finale, after Camille apologizes to Skate Kitchen via text, their relationship is all of a sudden fixed and none of this is shown or explained. It just cuts to a shot of all of them pushing down the street together, and then the movie ends. Like I'm not even kidding, that's just what happens. She fixes everything through a couple of texts, and then they're all friends again. And again, none of this is actually shown or, and basically even told. It's just kind of like magical text, everything's fixed. Like there was such a huge focus and point on Camille breaking off from Skate Kitchen because they have this whole conflict of Camille hanging out with Devin. But then all of a sudden it's fixed, they're all friends again. Where it's like, that came out of nowhere. I was very much expecting a scene to where they actually talk about what's going on. And you know, they reconcile and then they reunite and all that. Just not a whole shot of them like being friends again. So yeah, that's a lot about what I had to say about the movie. So it's like, it started out very very strong I feel, but then over time it just got very weak. But not weak to the point where it stops its overall uh, message. Like this whole coming of age journey, like it does that effectively, but it could have been much more stronger and much more effective if just proper storytelling was in place. Now the movie is 1 hour and 45 minutes long, but a lot of this movie felt like filter, like filler. Now, if you took away all that filler, this movie could have easily been like 50 minutes or so. Now, they should have just replaced a lot of this filler with a lot better writing and exposition, and this could have reduced the overall length of the movie. Now again, just going back to show not tell, if they replace a bunch of these scenes with scenes that actually show like uh, Camille's inner conflict, the conflict between the girls and the boys, which explains why they hate each other, and all of that stuff like that, this would have been a much better movie overall. Now for me, this movie wasn't it for me personally. I think the world building was excellent. They just did it really nice to the point where in some of the scenes, it was hard to tell if it was staged or not. But for the other points, like the overall plot and storytelling and whatnot, was very, very weak. Overall, it's a decent movie, you know? If it sounds like you're, if it sounds like something you're interested in, go for it, you know? But for me, I don't plan on rewatching it anytime soon. So yeah, that has been another video. If you have any questions, comments, feel like I missed anything out, just leave them in the comments below. And as always, I will see you in the next one.